my name's Luke O'Neill and my latest book is called What Makes Us Human and it's all about the science of being human but it's aimed at the teenage age group. So this book was adapted for the teenage age group um, because Humanology came out in 2018, that was for grown-ups, went down very well, people liked it and then we thought why not make it accessible to the more teenage age group and James Doyle then helped me, he ghost wrote it and I then helped to finalise the text so it's great because it's all about being human and what could be more interesting than that especially if you're a teenager was our overall view. Well, the big question in the book is what makes us human and lots of different aspects tell us that we're human beings. So for example, we love music and there's a chapter all about the science of music. Uh, there's a chapter on humour. Us humans love a good laugh, uh, most of all, I guess, compared to other species as well. And again, I go into the science behind why we find things funny and why humour might be important for us as a species. Well, why we like music? Again, it's fascinating that scientists will bother to try and answer that. But remember, the book is all about how great science is and examining big questions. Now, why do we like music? Well, there's a few different reasons. It's a very social thing, and we're a socially sort of minded species. So for example, a football crowd chanting. It's a big, huge tribe of people all together chanting this song. It's also very good for our immune system. And of course, I'm an immunologist. And it turns out, if you listen to music, you can boost your immune system and special cells come out of your bone marrow, you make more antibodies, really good science supports that. So music de-stresses us really, I guess. And then the immune system is one of the beneficial things. The third thing I might mention is it's very good for our brains. And when you're playing music or singing, you're concentrating, you're using your brain muscle, I guess, and that muscle then improves in many ways. And, and a great study has shown it wards off things like Alzheimer's and dementia. So music has all kinds of benefits. Well, why we age is a big question as well, of course, science. Every, all life on Earth ages. Nobody can defy aging, really. Although one or two creatures, strangely, are immortal. But as humans, eventually, we have to age and then sadly die, you know? And we don't really know. I mean, it's a good example of a scientific question that we're still trying to address. And of course, I'd love more people to become scientists and maybe wonder, you know, and figure out why we age. It's important because as we age, we get diseases. Things like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, arthritis all happen as we age and even cancer. So if we understood more about the aging process, we might come up with ways to slow down aging and certainly help us live a healthier uh, old. Well, if I could choose a superpower, invisibility. <laughs> but that, wouldn't that be great? You'd become invisible, wouldn't that be marvelous? That seems a long way off, doesn't it? You know? But in, in that chapter on superheroes, I talk about muscles. And did you know you can change a gene in a mouse and it makes it three times stronger. Now, can you imagine if us humans could become three times stronger? Wouldn't that be brilliant? So maybe increase my muscle mass through a simple change in a gene. That might be useful as well. Well, Ireland's call, shall we call it, for science. You know, I would just say this. Look, there's many jobs you can do in life, and they're all good. I mean, there's many different types of occupations and professions. What could be better? than discovering something brand new you know, about the world scientifically. It could be anything. It could be astronomy. It could be new medicines. It could be all kinds of things. It's just a wonderful thing to discover new things, you see. And that kind of um, helps us in our curious nature. And of course, we hope teenagers are curious about the world. So you can become a scientist and make discoveries. And then more importantly, those discoveries might help us. It might be new medicines, it might be climate change, it might be you know, helping older people, all kinds of really big problems that we have to confront. We need scientists to solve those problems. So come and join us is the message really on our scientific journey. My biggest hope, first and foremost, is they find it fun because science should really be fun. And me as a scientist, when I'm doing experiments, discovering new things about the world. What a thrill that is to find a new fact about something, you know, because science is all about discovering new things. And then secondly, encourage people to think about becoming scientists. We need you. I mean, the, the, the key message in the book is science needs people to become scientists. And there's so many challenges that face us in the world. Climate change being a great example. Science will help us solve that, you see. And of course, in the pandemic with COVID, great science was deployed to discover vaccines and treatments, and that needed scientists. So most of all, I'd hope someone might read the book and go, hey, I might become a scientist and I might make discoveries that might help us in various ways. 
I, I guess the, the big message about this book is come, come and join us on this scientific journey. Learn about what it is to be human. I mean, what a great question that is. And of course, teenagers should be fascinated you know, about you know, what makes their bodies work, where, how, how we evolved, medicines, all kinds of things are in the book. You know? So really, if you want to find out fun facts about science, about what makes us human, then this is the book for you, really. The first book I ever read was about Paddington Bear. Isn't that strange? And when I was like nine or ten years of age, I loved Paddington. And so the first book was a Paddington book. Well, there was a great science writer whose name was Isaac Asimov. And when I was a teenager, he wrote The Asimov Guide to Science. And there was three separate books, Chemistry, Physics and Biology. I read them. That's the thing that got me into science. So Isaac Asimov, uh, Guide to Science. My favourite book is Ulysses by James Joyce. It's a bit of an obvious one to say. I'll tell you why I love it though. There's loads of science and medicine in Ulysses. People obviously don't realise this. Towards the end, a lot of astronomy in Ulysses. That got me into the book in the first place.